Welcome everyone. Um, my name is Jess Slade. Um, I'm just going to give you a brief uh, introduction to the Community Helpline uh, for the workshop. So the Torbay Community Helpline was developed in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. It was established on the 16th of March 2020 and we've taken more than 22,000 calls. Uh, Torbay is one of the lottery funded Ageing Better areas uh, and our project's called Ageing Well Torbay. We've been actively working in the area for five years um, and this has given us a really strong position um, to make a difference in our community. Uh, so leading into the pandemic, um, we decided that we might be able to contribute in the support for our local community. Uh, we had the opportunity to embed asset-based community development to truly understand our local community and envisage the gaps in services and support which would be most needed for those most vulnerable to the virus. We thought we could co-produce and create a platform to work together to support our community and enable residents to have a one call, that's all number, to use for inquiries, questions and requests for help. Starting with our Ageing Well partner organisations, in just a few short weeks we were able to offer un a unique service for our area, which actually started before the first lockdown. With our collaborative working and building trusted relationships with our other community and voluntary sector groups and statutory services, volunteers and staff came from all different sectors, backgrounds and organisations to come over to the community helpline as call handlers, telephone befrienders, rapid responders, matched volunteers um, for all specific areas. Call outs were made to our local residents uh, to join us in our efforts and support each other through the pandemic. Hundreds came forward offering a variety of skills, time and support to help one another through what might look to be a difficult time ahead. Organisations such as the local food banks in Torbay came together uh, and we created the Torbay Food Alliance so that they could share resources, raise funds and create a single access referral pathway for all those that called the helpline to ensure that everyone in Torbay could access food during the pandemic. Our advice, information and guidance organisations collaborated to create a simple one-step referral process through the helpline, triaged by one partner who ensured the correct members of those uh, organisations were allocated to support the caller. As we took more and more calls, we could identify common themes and develop our offer to the, the residents of our community and meet their needs. Working with all partners to co-produce the processes needed to establish new referral pathways, creating new roles and recruiting new individuals, groups and organisations who could support one another along the way. Torbay Community Development Trust knew that we could not take this on alone. But because of our experience and knowledge gained through Ageing Well in co-production and the relationships formed through co-delivery of our programme here in Torbay, we were in a position to be the conduit to bring all together to create something meaningful and much needed for our community to thrive as best as we could as we moved into the unknown of the pandemic. This workshop will give you an experience of just one of those 22,000 calls made to the Torbay Community Helpline during the first lockdown. Thank you, Jess. Um, so I'm Marianne, I'm a community builder with Torbay Ageing Well, and I'm just going to explain what's going to happen now uh, when you're going to go into your breakout room. So um, we're going to uh, play, play a kind of game. You're going to be in a team with a few other people and you're going to go into a breakout room with your small team, improvising together with the support of our narrator and our actor who will be with you when you get into the breakout room. You're going to solve a problem. It's an, it's an actual real problem that we had on the helpline. 
you're going to solve a problem from a call that you receive on the helpline. So you will be making calls to get help for this person and an actor will answer your calls and the actor will be all the people on the other end of the phone, whoever you decide to call at any one moment. Just remember to tell them who they are before you call them so they know who they're going to be. Um, you should have had emailed to you all the contacts that you will need to help you to solve the problem. And if anyone hasn't got that list in front of them now on their screen or printed, or they didn't receive it or they couldn't open it, please could you write that in the chat now and we will try and email it to you right now. Okay, so hopefully you've all got that and you, hopefully you've had a chance to have a read of that um, and a chance to look at all those contacts, all those people who can help you to solve this scenario. Your narrator will brief you at the beginning, then you will receive a call, the call, with the problem that you're going to solve from your actor who will be Bill when he calls you. Then the fun begins. You discuss how to answer his call, what you think might be a good idea to do, to do um, you know, consulting with each other. It's a good idea before you call anybody to discuss everything together. You can all take turns to be the call handler as well. So it doesn't just have to be one person all the time. Um, and then one of you uh, for this call becomes the call handler and you answer his call. Then you improvise your way uh, through the rest of the scenario and after about 40 minutes we'll all come back into the room here together and then each narrator will give about one minute's feedback on, ha on what happened in your particular scenario, what happened to Bill in the end. Um, and then Jill who is with us, who, was, who actually answered this call on the helpline um, and knows the whole story and helped him out. She will tell us what really actually happened. And then hopefully we'll have some time at the end to answer any questions you might have. Okay, good luck everyone. Welcome back everybody. I'm gonna very quickly just, we're gonna quickly run through how all the narrators, um, uh, just a bit of feedback from each group, uh, see how you all did, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then afterwards we're gonna, Go to Jill, who's going to tell you about the actual story. So this is based on a real story. And this is one of thousands of stories that we have collected over the last year that have all been incredibly tense, difficult, emotional, you know. But we did just want to give you a flavour of the kind of thing we were up to and our amazing call cool handlers we're dealing with every day. Um, so my group, um, we almost got to the end so close we kind of rushed the last bit just to uh get up there um but i think you you both did really really well i'm really impressed i'd have you on the phone line any day i'd have you doing this job any day it was great um nina you you agree with that absolutely yeah i think they did very well definitely um mark would you like to go next because you're next to me for some reason you bugger. No, it was, uh, we, we were at an advantage because Liz was absolutely fantastic, although we were at a slight disadvantage because we only had Liz, but she was brilliant. Um, I might have overscored her, so apologies for that fair, but um, she got a grand total of 55. Uh, so she uh, initially phoned the food bank and uh, mentioned old dietary requirements of facilities and then arranged for the food, food delivery. Um, she then called Bill back uh, to, to, to say that he had the parcel and then she also checked uh, what his priority was uh, furniture wise which is brilliant um, she, even, she, she took into consideration the broken lift and also mentioned housing uh, options uh, in the future for Bill which is fantastic uh, she then arranged delivery with Tony uh, Tony couldn't lift <laughs> couldn't lift the sofa so Liz then arranged for some volunteers to lift so that's sorry I'm going off the screen here um, and then she even queried with Tony that didn't we actually agree 
the measurements initially, so she um, she put a foot down with that one, so that was fantastic. Um, I didn't keep it going as well as I could have in terms of structure, so we then moved on to um, a community builder. So Liz contacted the builder and um, explained fully uh, Bill's requirements and uh, what he needed, so hence the 55, which apologies if that's too many, but I thought he was brilliant. I don't know. Brilliant. Cool. Thank you very much, Mark. Silent applause. Um, Tim. Um, Helen's starting on the helpline tomorrow. So there um. you go. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was amazing. There was even things I was like, oh, I don't do that. Or I hadn't thought about doing that. <laughs> um, so no, Helen was brilliant. Um, even though Bill kept calling her by the wrong name, she just was completely unflustered and didn't correct him at all, just let it kept going on. Um, she kept Bill informed at all stages of the process of what was happening and what she was going to do, and then phoning him back to tell him what, he, what she'd done and what was going to happen. Um, <laughs> because Bill kept complaining about his legs, um, and he said he hadn't actually got a, a doctor, so Helen actually did offer to help to get him registered to a doctor and offer a volunteer to get transport to get him to the doctor so he could get his legs checked over. She also offered a benefits check because he said that he hadn't got any money. Um, and she offered to help find a volunteer to do the shopping as well. We got him his food bank organised. Um, and um, Helen also asked him about his furniture, what his furniture needs were, what his priorities were, what he wanted first. Um, but because we had to get Sweet Sally Ann to do our food delivery and Sweet Sally Ann wouldn't draw breath or shut up, um, that took quite a lot of time to get the food bank sorted because Sally Ann does like a bit of a chat. So we didn't get any further than actually establishing his needs for his furniture. So we didn't actually get to organising delivery of it, but we were pretty, pretty well there. So it was brilliant. I was mightily impressed. That's Sally Ann. Never shuts up. No. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, yes. Wow. I feel bad now because I only awarded 15 points in mine, but um, oh. Joe was amazing as well. <laughs> so I feel bad now. But yes, no, she um, had a lovely initial conversation with Bill about what his immediate needs were, managed to sort out food parcel, also spoke to sweet Sally Ann and got it delivered. Luckily, she was quite good at cutting the phone call off, so that moved on swiftly. She suggested and got consent, which I was like, yes, for a housing referral to chase up what was going on with his temporary accommodation. Um, had a very in-depth conversation about his priorities. We found out they had a TV and it was his first TV that he's ever had for six years being homeless. So it's his pride and joy. Um, so now we're trying to move to finding him a sofa, a microwave and actually a bed to put the mattress on because he's currently sleeping on the floor. Um, and we called the community builder to try and connect him because he doesn't know anyone. Um, and that will hopefully community builders knows someone that lives in Peacock Towers so he's going to have a new neighbour and person to talk to while he's staying in his temporary accommodation so well done Joe I don't know if you want to add anything Theo lovely jubbly sounds good um, and then the last one was Jill and Ursha wasn't it so Jill I think you're in the meeting yeah, yeah. Uh, we had Fazana and Judith and they were fab, so they can start on the helpline tomorrow as well. And like Mark, they got 55 points. So I so um, I thought we did very well. Um, we got him a, a food parcel. We checked his allergies. We um, checked his cooking facilities. Um, it was going to be delivered to him. He had a hot meal that evening. Um, I, the... We were, going to, we were going to check his benefits. We talked to colleagues. We checked with the shift leader. Um, we were then um, sorting his heating out. And we had just got as far as Transit Tony and two volunteers to deliver his, um, to deliver his sofa. So, um, yeah, lots of things were covered and it was all done really nicely. And 
and he was Bill was very very happy so yeah we hadn't got as far as getting his sofa stuck up the stairs so thank goodness for that <laughs> um, but yeah did a fab job so yeah wow uh, absolutely applause all around I think we have just managed to get 10 fabulous new helpline workers um, <laughs> 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 Uh, and the yeah. role can be done virtually, so it doesn't matter yeah. where you live in the world. <laughs> um, I just hope it really demonstrates that not only, you know, this was a taste of what we do, but how different it can be. And if you imagine that times 20,000 and a million different possibilities of how we've had to tackle this. And a lot of it, yeah. when we've done it, it wouldn't have been possible without all of the other agencies, without all the other people, without all of our amazing volunteers, um, and without the people on the phone lines putting in that, little bit extra and just you know having those conversations that turn into sagas um so we're just going to go to jill now really quickly he's going to give you a brief overview because this all happened to jill and she'll give you an idea of what actually happened so bill called the helpline he spoke to one of our call handlers and the way that um we worked was that the call handlers take inquiries and the shift leaders call back um to confirm all the all the detail of a food parcel request um, that was all confirmed and during both those two phone calls we found out that he had no furniture, no heating etc etc um, so we delivered a food parcel the food bank also supplied um, pots and pans for him because they provide a starter pack from one of the food banks that's um, a cutlery, crockery and um, pans starter pack um, I suggested he looked on marketplace because you know part of our role apart from facilitating is to try and make them be independent as well um to look on Facebook for things but he had no transport even if he found things on Facebook so having accepted that and he'd got limited credit and dodgy internet so um what we agreed was that him and I would both look at um Facebook and try and find the things that he needed and um, then with my other hat as a community builder because he was in a patch I was just due to take over um, that I said that I'd got a bit of a TARDIS of a car so it would help him. Um, we both looked on Facebook um, for, for a small sofa for him because that seemed to be his next priority was to sort his furniture and things out um, and he did have a very large TV that was his only possession but I think he'd been dreaming of it for six years so he's very happy that he had that but nothing to put it on um he saw a tv stand that he asked me to collect and we between us had found a sofa for him so I took the tv stand with a volunteer to um deliver to him and then we realized that his stairs got very very narrow he was in the eaves of a house and he and um, the likelihood of getting a sofa up his stairs and round a corner with a low ceiling was um, not going to be you know, unlikely. I agreed that myself and the volunteer, a friend of mine, would go and look at the sofa and pick it up. And then we had to ring him and tell him that it didn't, that it wasn't going to fit up his stairs. Um, I had from one of our office clear outs, I had an old Parkinol. Um, easy chair in my garage so I sent him a photo and said do you want this for the time being which I then delivered and both of us continued to look for other things for him on Facebook um, one being that he found another chair and when I drove down somebody had left it outside for us they told him it was a small pong chair you know those Ikea ones it was a child's chair so I oh. drove down somebody's drive it was there waiting for me and then I drove away without that one again um finally between us we found a sofa that came apart and so I um went and collected it for him and then him and one of his neighbors carried it up the stairs and in the meantime we'd found quite a lot of other things that he needed like curtains and bedding and table lamps and all the other things so he did get pretty well furnished from um from myself and through facebook and through the, our helpline volunteers so two of them had things that he needed and um gave them to me to deliver to him um so what else have i got bill bill we then referred him in for um to a one of our 
partner organisations and he's been supported by them and he's um, to get him back into kind of a more positive state and employment and another of our or internal organisations have has done kind of one to one meetings with him in a safe, COVID secure space. So he's getting there now. He's kind of you know he's on the way and things are looking better for him. So that's it really. Thank you, Dad's. Um, and all of that was just from a food bank of Yeah. Now he phones in to get some food and is now building an amazing. He's life got for yeah, got got heating, got furniture, got some contacts. And um, but one thing our group came up with was they were quite keen to get him befriended and that we haven't done that yet. But I think that the other support that he's got has probably helped him in that in that way as well. Thanks everyone for uh, dancing on a shifting carpet with us. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, if you want, yeah, um, you can put your questions in the chat or you can just um, raise your hand and ask us now. Um, or you can send feedback to me. I've put my email address up there. I missed off the dot UK, so please add that on. 